uh, uh, Derby. City traveled to uh, Old Trafford for another installation of these two guys that they've been, you know, they've been going at each other for some reason. Last season, United picked them by two goals to one at the Old Trafford. Um, United seem to, in a way, have a way of playing City, especially at home. But before we talk about that game, when Eric Ten Hag took over Manchester United, he made a very bold, bold statement. And I, I went like, ooh. And this, and I quote him, errors do come to an end. And I think that he was making reference to the dominance of City because I, I don't want to bring in Liverpool. They are just a flash in the pan. But the dominance of uh, Manchester City. We were hoping that two years on, we will see something that is indicative that this man is walking the talk or is trying to do something to actually ensure that the era comes to an end. But City have actually done the trouble in that era. Hey, sorry, the trouble in that era. Let's speak to that before we preview that game. Well, I think that you need to be fair to the fact of the issue. Okay. No? I, I think you're being uh, very unfair okay. to the fact make, of the issue. Make, make the fairness you, if, available. No, because if you make that comment the City won the treble post What's that comment? Comment. Yeah. This was City won the treble in Ten Hag's first season. Well, okay, justifiably. That's the point. Yeah. City won the treble in but, Ten Hag's But also, first relative fact, they no. didn't post their comment. Exactly. So I do not see the correlation between he working in first anyway, season. Let's look at that. Has he won the talk? Well, I, 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 I think that it is too early. For anybody to be drawing any conclusions on My whether it's worked, yes. Why do you say it's too early? Listen, there are people who have spent the most money. Pep Guardiola, <laughs> um, you know, I sometimes I, I do not want to. Know. I don't want to talk about Pep Guardiola because sometimes I think I, I sound a broken record. Yeah, but he's a genius. No, it's not. It's not genius. genius. I mean, anybody can have that kind of money and do all of the things that Pep Guardiola is doing. You understand? I mean, the people who have spent over a billion pounds on transfers alone. Yeah. They've been there for seven years. Yeah. Tell me Pep Guardiola's story when he first walked into England. He was dead at the end of the... Had it happened to him in his career before? No, it was the first time. So what's the first? How long did it take and how much did it take to re-establish or the to establish that kind of... Dominance. The following season, he was he won the league. That's fine. That's fine. The second season, he won the league. That's fine. And from then, he's not looked back. No, I mean, I, 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 I think that, I think that, this comment ought to be put in the proper perspective. Okay. He do not, he do not topple dynasties in a year or two. Okay. He do not topple dynasties in two years, three years. It's a project. Okay. And this is one thing that Sports 101 has constantly been hammering up. It is a project. Before I, I come in, have you one. seen anything indicative of the fact I've that seen a lot of things. this, have, this project have, will actually yield I, I have, fruition? I have seen a lot of things. What are those things? I have seen the culture change. For any club to succeed, okay. you need... A certain cultural what, environment. What do you mean by there's a cultural change? Because I do well, not see, understand. Let me tell you something. And the only gonna social. Yeah. And sorry if I talk about only gonna social in the minor I do. And the only gonna social, everything was permissible at Manchester United. Uh -huh. Everything was absolutely permissible okay. from the time that the players walked into training, from the time they set up from training, from who they interacted with, from who was leaking stories in the dressing room. Everything was permissible. Listen, if you want to succeed, it is more about the things you do in the background than more about the things you show on the pitch. Okay. Because the things you do in the background will eventually reflect on the things you do. And the only gonna so sir, this these tantrums being thrown by Jordan Sancho, JD Sancho, would have been permissible. Enough of Oligana Social. We are talking about Eric Ten Hag and his state. I am telling you, you think that, that he is think establishing that, that, he's established a cultural change. And you think now, they, are, they are on the right now, path. Now the players at Manchester United know that there is a certain code that they need to live and die by. If you understand? Listen, listen. Uh -huh. A couple of weeks ago, I watched the David Beckham. Um, um, documentary. documentary. Yeah. I got chills. I got chills not because of the exploits of 
the footballers. It comes but from because, nostalgic no, place. I got chills because of the level of influence Sir Alex Ferguson had on that squad. Okay. So if you want a manager to succeed, it's not just about going out there and trying to impose a style of play on the pitch. I, I think that that's just a byproduct of the things that you do in the background. Okay. And for me, I am more than convinced that if there was a man to break that era, it's Eric Ten Hag. It has to be Eric Ten Hag. So this is my take. I think that first of all, Eric Ten Hag is delusional. He's deluded to think that errors do come to an end and he's the one uh, to break that era. Maybe he's talking about the era where bald-headed managers take control and all of that. But I do not think that it has to do with football. Why do I say so? When you make such a bold statement, after your, I'm, I'm not saying that I expected him to do anything his first season because it will be too premature. But if you see managers walk into a team in their first season, you see traces of brilliance. Ange Pochettegu is a typical example. Not even Ange. The first time Arsene Wenger walked into Arsenal. And won three league look, trophies in 19 you years. You look at his... Won three you, league trophies in 19 years. You look I mean, at his no first season. That is and you no see that This is a man that is that going example. to live something. Now, I see that he's deleted because I've watched Manchester United for almost two seasons now. One, there is no structure to the team. There is nothing resemblance of this is a team. Whenever Manchester United play, you literally have to sit on ten towels. For the past, I do not know how many months now. I've never watched my I'm not a United fan, so I can even imagine what United fans are going through. You watch United and there's no structure, there's no identity. Listen, I agree. He's a good coach. He's not a, the, one of the brilliant managers out there. He's a very good coach. But I always say that every manager has his asset. There's a reason why Graham Porter succeeded at Brighton and failed at Chelsea. You may have the qualities of a great manager, but when you enter a certain system, one, you need to know how to manage the system. You need to know how to manage challenges. Somebody may be great at managing small boys, but you may not be great at managing big egos. So people are saying that Roberto Di Zerbi is, is the next heir to Pep Guardiola. I tell you, Brighton is the, the, the ballroom or the atmosphere at Brighton is very different from the atmosphere at City. All these dynamics need so to be taken into play. Why are so, you mentioning the name what, of the space coach? So what I'm saying here is that he, he, may, he may be great at it's Ajax. He step. may have done all the things he, he did at Ajax, but he walks into this Manchester United team and he's struggling because... Some of his decision making in terms of some of the senior players, I think that he didn't go about it the right way. Now, I say and I repeat, he's very delusional because. But can you share this, more light on some of the decisions? I'm coming. This the is not a manager. Players. Because for me, that's for key, me. It's a key point. I will. You make the Ronaldo decision. That, oh, come on. Very, very, for come me, on. Maguire decision. Come on. Even the decision to call out jo J Jordan Sancho publicly. I mean, Everybody has their leadership style, but sometimes there's a template. For me, I, 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 I hope that he proves me wrong, Bakovi. In the last two seasons, as we speak, United have the most expensive squad, not in England, but in Europe. 1.3 billion worth of assembly of get, players. I don't get that point you're making. I, I'm coming. I don't get that United point. United have no, the I, most I, expensive I, squad. I don't get the point you are making. Ten Hag has bought I, nine I, players. I do not this get the point you are making. an Eric then, Ten Hag team. No, I don't Yet, get the there is no so resemblance you, of football. So, so how dare you tell me but so you're saying Eric do come to an end? Eric Ten Hag has spent 1.3 billion. No. Nope. What are you saying? He's managing a team nope. that is worth 1.3 billion. He's managing a team that is worth 1.3 billion. The most expensive you go ahead squad to in say, Europe. Yet you go ahead to say that this is an Eric Ten Hag team. Eric Ten Hag how much has he spent on out of that one, one billion? In two seasons, Eric Ten Hag has spent close to 500 million pounds. That's, 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 I can give you the record. That's, 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 in his first season, he spent 230 true. million pounds. That's, that's, his second season, he spent 250 million pounds. No, but I mean... So the records are there. No, but so... Granted, he spent two, granted, 230 granted, in your first season, 250 in your second season. That is four... How much? 480. 480 out of a billion and three. Oh, no, but if you're if you're doing the dynamics... Now we are going so, into the no. dynamics. So you say Manchester United have the most expensive squad, blah, 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 1.3 billion, yes. whatever, and you spent 
less than 500 million pounds of that squad in two seasons how then do you say that somebody that has is, been in charge is, for that seven uh, years how then, spent over no, a billion no, you are complaining no, you've no, spent no, two no, years no, and you have no, spent no, almost no, half a billion no how do you say that that is the team of eric ten Hag? When he does not because have, no, nine no, out no, of no, the eleven no, players no. at 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 United now he bought them he bought Malaysia he bought Onana he Malaysia bought, plays ahead of who whether he plays or not no, that is the you, coach's you issue to he bought in Malaysia he brought in Casimero he brought in Varani he brought in Lisandro Martinez in he brought in Lisandro Martinez he brought in Vengos. He brought in. Oh, come uh, on. I mean, I, I, I think that's now. <laughs> he I, brought in Hodgland. Nine players. Nine. Come on. If Enough you can name it. the starting <laughs> 11 of Manchester United. <laughs> Enough of. But, Enough but, of Eric but, but just, a, just a quick one okay. on the Eric Ten Hag okay. situation. I think that. It's all fun on sports. Well, I, 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 yeah. I think that you are over exaggerating the situation. I think that. Um, listen, when Pep Gaiola came. Uh huh. He had to take him a whole, a whole process of facing out players he didn't That's true. like. Yeah, I mean, he inherited an average age of thirty-five. Fantastic! I'm not disputing it. I mean, he had to, he had to make decisions. He had to get some of them wrong. That's true. He had to rewrite the decisions. That's true. I, if you say that you watch Manchester United. And no Manchester United have not played comfortably for the last... In fact, I mean, it's, it's not even the last two years. I, I think you're about exaggerating, uh, exaggerating the situation. If you say you haven't watched Manchester United play comfortably... No, then you're not being fair to which this game, place. Which game this season? Now, I'll give you... No, now I'll, you're let, saying let me, this let season. Let me chronicle. Then you let say me chronicle. the last two seasons. United, Nottingham Forest, was it a comfortable win? United Sheffield was it a comfortable well, win? Uh, United Copenhagen was it a comfortable win? United uh, uh, Burnley was it? These are games that Ninos have dominated United, and United have won this game at the scruff of their teeth or their nose or whatever it is. Yes, United I mean, are a, laboring to win. That's cliche, what I'm saying. That for the cliche, past two years, there's there is cliche. nothing exciting about this club. The, you put this season in perspective. There's a cliche that. The best teams in the world win even when they are not playing right. And I, I think that cliche is so right City, about Manchester City, United. City United. City. Where do you see this game going? Well, City always remain the smaller team in Manchester. They may have won the Champions League and finally had a, a, a table at the seat of men. But yeah. City are a small club. Uh -huh. Terribly small club. Uh -huh. um, with a lot of noisy fans. Yes, I agree that in the last decade probably they've had a better of manchester united but um when it comes to city and manchester united it's not about form it's not about who plays well it's about, who it's about desire it it's about desire that's why Ole Gunnar Solskjaer once beat pep gaiola three times yeah. out of four in yeah. a particular season that's true you understand so it's more about the desire it's about who wants is the most i have seen True to your words, I've seen Manchester United play uh, before the international break, after the international break. They've not looked too comfortable. You understand? They've not looked too convincing. And I won't sit here and say that, oh, okay, they look too comfortable. But when it comes to the dynamics of the of the of the Manchester Derby, two different dynamics altogether. Who wins I, it? Old Trafford. Yeah, at Old Trafford. The big boys. Those city themselves are not playing too well. As always. Yeah, grinding result. No, I don't think City will win the league this season. I mean, let me be first to say it here. I don't think they'll be the first team to win the APL four times on the trots. They, they don't look convincing. I mean, they they've, always, seen, they've no, never been convincing no, no, at the only start thing, of the season. The only thing going for City is that they have a lot of money to spend. So if you look at their bench, there's a wealth of talent. But if you are going to be fair to the discourse, City have played rubbish this season. A lot of rubbish. Who wins it? I... Old Trafford. <laughs> yeah, it's... Old Trafford. We'll, we'll do I, one I for Sir Bobby be, Charlton. I need you to be specific. We'll do, you know, you know, Bobby Charlton was the guy who invented the theatre of dreams. Yeah, scoreline. Yeah. Well, I think Manchester United are going to beat City by three goals to one. Okay, so quickly, uh, City against. I think that I've watched Manchester United and they are more reactionary in terms of their approach to games. So when games that they need to play with emotions, they play with lots of emotions, especially at Old Trafford. And like you said, this game will be 
emotionally driven. And United have that upper hand. But I, I still think that I look at United this season, and I'm doing a trend, trend analysis. United are more woeful than City have been this season. City may not have played too well. They've not been convinced, but United have been rubbish this season. And if there's anybody that I'll bank my money on, yes, United have been a bit dominant over City at Old Trafford, but I, I think that City will win this. Uh, United will score, but I think City will, will score more. City might just beat them three goals to one. Well, I think the reverse is true for me. United will beat City by three goals to one. So, who wins it uh, on Sunday is the big one at, in Manchester in Old Trafford. Manchester City uh, travel to Old Trafford to take on United. I am predicting City will do one over uh, uh, United. Uh, Ten Hag in his yesterday in his post my press conference says that they are building a momentum. I'm trying to see which momentum that is. Three wins but, um, in a row. But um, let's see what happens, Three guys. Three straight wins. Uh, Kofi, why are we doing the shoot for? Yeah, we are shooting live from the shocks um, hub at the at the mall in Takradi. You can walk in by for any of your drinks, any food you so desire. Wonderful place, great atmosphere, great people here. Monday to Sunday, they are open any time of the week for you to walk in and order something off your delight. So, you're shooting live on the Choi um, Shocks app. Sorry. Make sure you subscribe to Sports 101. Very, very important. This is our big game preview on Sports 101.